Hey, what do you know? When you don't feature the tribal chief prominently, ratings go down. Well, that you bring somebody else back, the rating slayer. What else would you expect? Yeah, exactly. It was not the best of weeks for SmackDown, admittedly. And if you agree, you should smash that subscribe button and follow the show on Twitter. It opened up this week well enough. Roman Reigns and Paul Heyman are out there facing off with Adam Pearce and talking about what's going to happen at Elimination Chamber. And while Edge continues to play it scared and delay his inevitable fate, our Tribal Chief's work is never done, meaning he's going to have to defend his Universal title at Elimination Chamber. But, 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 he's not going to have to do it in the Chamber match itself. Which is, which is fine to me. At least we won't have two chamber matches for the world title. I, I don't see the point in it. I think this is fine. You can actually have a reason to have two chamber matches, but do something a little different. I'm cool with that. It also made sense the way they did this to have Kevin Owens and Jey Uso put into the match because they're the two guys that have previously feuded with Roman over the title. Although I would find it kind of interesting that you're going to put Jay in that spot was a little weird, admittedly, because you're saying, okay, you know, for all you know, Jay will get to face Roman and do finger poke a doom stuff, which, you know, if the head of the table so desires, that's what he's going to do. But the opening of the show is okay. And it quickly went downhill afterwards. You've put the other four spots in the Elimination Chamber match, um, You've put them on the line, and you're going to have them, those spots determined by a couple of tag matches. The first one is Sami Zayn and Barry Corbin versus the Mysterios. And, it, of course, here's a conspiracy. Your Intercontinental Champion, my Intercontinental Champion, the one true Intercontinental Champion, Sami Zayn, has to be in this tag match with Baron Corbin in order to qualify for the Chamber. That's crap. And they ended up winning because of the power and magnificence and skills, pure skills, of Sami Zayn. Well, that said, maybe the Mysterios should have won this match. You know, why not use the Chamber match to launch these two towards Mania? Just a thought. Like, now I look at it and I say, okay, what are you doing with Ray and Dominic heading into Mania? Are you going to have them have a tag match? Like, are they going to take on the freaking Dirty Dogs? Oh, I don't even know. Feels like the timing is right. Let's go ahead and split off Ray and Dominic, but instead they didn't. Intercontinental Championship match. Here's what I gotta say about a cop Paulo Cruz. If he's six foot one, then I'm six foot fucking four. Bullshit. That whole graphic of Apollo Cruz is six foot one, two hundred forty pounds. Bullshit. Because if Big E is listed at five eleven, and Big E is at least eye level or slightly taller than Apollo Cruz, then how the hell is Apollo Cruz six foot one? Come on, man. Seriously. And is anybody else kind of over the whole open challenge concept for the mid card titles? Feels like a kind of lazy way to feature your mid-card champion without actually putting them in an interesting storyline or really focusing on how you're going to book them. No, because a lot of you are match marks and move nerds. Yeah, probably. It, just for me, no, give me one feud. And I don't, I'm not saying that Cruz and Big E is even the feud that I want because, frankly, I kind of agree with what Big E was saying in his promo. That should be back of the damn line for Apollo Crews, because how many opportunities and chances do you get here? Just saying. So, you know, this Big E match against Shinsuke, I didn't really care about. Why would I? You're not going to have Nakamura, Nakamura on actually beat Big E. And now you're teasing yet another match between Big E and Apollo Crews. And at this point in time, I'm good with that. That's a hard pass for me. Bailey versus Liv Morgan just kind of happened, and the only thing good about it is more involvement by Billy Kay. Give her more camera time every week. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, the Street Profits versus Otis and Chad Gable. Um, here's what, outside of the match itself, and the fact that, you know, you made such a big deal to break Otis away from Tucker just to put him right back in another tag team because Vince doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Um, here's the most important question. Why in the hell is Montez Ford dancing for Sasha Banks? If this was real, 
he would immediately catch all types of hell from Bianca. Let's be clear. Let's not get it twisted. And if this was also real, Bianca, after she was done whooping his ass for dancing to Sasha Banks, she would go out there all crazy-like and want to fuck up Sasha immediately. Right? Am I right here? I can't be the only one that thinks this. Instead, it's Bianca and Sasha in the ring, and they're talking about Mania, but then here comes Nia Jax. It seems pretty risky to bring Nia Jax around these two. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But we realized what this all was about was some type of organic moment that happened on Raw where Nia Jax landed on the apron and split her crack and said, my hole, my hole. Now the WWE, of course, had to take that organic moment and completely ruin it and try to make a farce out of it, which is exactly what the hell they did. So instead of doing something really interesting with Bianca and Sasha, this is what the hell we got. <laughs> on that. Like I said, not a great show this week. And with the rating slayer coming back and you're saying, who's that? It's Seth Rollins. Like, is it any surprise that Seth Rollins returns if your shit goes this week? I don't think so. The hell is the appeal of Seth Rollins at this point? And you put him there center stage and make everybody stand around. And then he's going right back to being the same damn character as before. Like, he brings up the whole notion of having a family now, and he's got a kid, and then you don't do anything different with him. It's just dumb. And giving Seth Rollins a live mic is always borderline kind of stupid. And now, basically, what you did was you used this as a launching point to give us Tyler Black versus Claudio Castagnoli. Yippity, skippity, hooray! It's Ring of Honor 2011! Yeah! Cool that Cesaro is getting somewhat prominently featured. He's been there for a long time. Frankly, he deserves it. Compared to a lot of other people, he irritates me less. I'm cool with this. But I don't get it. Like, y'all tell me, is Seth Rollins really that good? Like, what is the appeal about him? And he's been a guy that's been forced down your throat for an extended period of time. Like a Randy Orton or Charlotte, very light. Not nearly to that level or degree, but he's been shoved and forced. Without producing any of the box office results that indicates that he continues to deserve that spot. And I mean, when you sit there and you look at the opening segment and you see Roman Reigns, and then you go to that one hour main event and you see Seth Rollins, my God, the difference is so freaking striking. They've put a lot behind Seth Rollins over the years. And the returns? Eh. Poopy. Not as poopy as the concept of putting the dirty dogs in the main event of SmackDown. <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler. I mean, seriously? It's bad enough when I watch SmackDown and the other good people that it has on it. Every week, I've got to get this diarrhea that is Dolph Ziggler on my freaking TV. But you're going to main event him and main event him in a match? Where the stakes are the winning team? Get slots in the Elimination Chamber match? Ugh. Ugh. Thank God Brian and Cesaro won this one. Because again, Dolph Ziggler. Like how is he still a thing? After all these years, he's never gotten any better. I mean, can you really point to him ever getting any better or progressing or doing anything different? He sucks. He always has sucked. Ever since he really morphed into the I'm going to wear twisties like a middle school girl show off type of piece of crap. He's still the same now. He sucks. When you put somebody like him in the main event of SmackDown, yet again, like the rating slayers return, you shouldn't be surprised when your viewership <clears throat> on you. And then you got Kevin Owens stunning everybody. Like when Steve Austin used to do it, it was cool. It was awesome. When Kevin Owens does it, you're just sitting there and looking at Teletubby and you're saying, ah. And now he's talking shit to Roman. Yeah, because that's what I want to see. I've already seen these guys wrestle three times. I want to see Kevin Owens get a fourth shot at Roman Reigns. That's fucking dumb. Who wants to see that at this point? 
Oh, here come the comments. Flaming keyboard fingers of fire in the launch position. Hey, Kevin Owens and Roman Reigns have had several good matches. That's what matters most. We want to see another match between these two. Ah, pfft, you suck. It's like this show sucked. Like, once you went past the opening segment, it was pretty much all downhill from here. You have some good weeks and you have some bad ones. And this was a bad one. And about the time that the rating slayer Seth Rollins came back, that was about it for me. I said, no, you know what? This is going to suck the rest of the way. And it certainly did. And it really lost me, I think, when you had the Street Profits dancing to Sasha. Like, people know who Montez Ford is married to. The fuck is he doing dancing to some other woman? Like, y'all have plastered that out there. I'm just saying. So yeah, it wasn't a good show. No Edge appearance. Roman was featured very minimally on the show. Not hard to see why this week kind of sucked.